Hey everybody, David Lemon here. I just wanted to inform you about the changes we did for Groove Cart. We have some cool and interesting things that we added and that we were working on for quite some time. Some things that we improved and quite a few fixes. So let me just go over and show you the list. So what we added, we are going to show you now. We added public API and webhooks. And this is very, very big task that we were working on for quite a few months now. This is now available for each and every store and that means that we can now connect GrooveCart to third-party platforms and you can do it yourself through webhooks and you can also uh, get platforms or software companies and you yourself could also design uh, programs and apps that could work with GrooveCart. So let me just show you how to get to webhooks and API. Once you're Logged into your store, you go to settings in the left hand sidebar, choose API and webhooks. There's going to be two things that we did here and one is the options to create new API keys and create new webhooks over here. But we also have created documentation that you can find from the screen over here. If you click on the documentation, you're going to be shown the actual do documentation needed to understand what this means. This is more for the people that are creating connections through webhooks and APIs. If you are not familiar with what these mean, you don't have to know. There's just some more uh, more advanced stuff for those of those users that want to connect other platforms to GrooveCart. So webhooks is for sending information out of GrooveCart. Like if somebody has uh, a purchase if you want to send that purchase and record it in your google sheets or send it to another platform or to a shipping fulfillment company you can do this through webhooks now and api is to send and receive information from and to GrooveCart. api is going to be used to develop different apps with different companies like for for drop shipping and for for other types of things where those apps are managing the information within GrooveCart and also sending out information from GrooveCart. So that's now available. We have full documentation and I just wanted to show you very quickly how it works. If you want to create a new API, you click the add new API key over here and then you just uh, select the things that you want to do. So if you want to do some carriers and things like that, you can add, delete and stuff like that. Make, uh, give it a name, give it a description, and then you just click save in the upper right hand side corner of here. Similarly for webhooks, this, this, this is the same kind of layout. For webhooks, you can create webhooks um, either on the screen if you don't have any or just from upper right hand side corner here. You give it a webhook title, you give it a URL where to send the information. You can also use login username or key and password. This is not necessary in certain cases. Some platforms require this information. And then over here, send on action, you actually decide what to do. Like, do you want to update the order, create a new product or update the product, create a new customer, update customer, things like that. So these are the options that you can manage now through our webhooks. You can create a webhook for for example, new order, and then turn on or turn off the status of this webhook. We also have this option for managing parameters. If you have some parameters like a name or email or first name or last name, and the platform where you're sending the information to is calling those parameters differently. Like for example, in some platforms, it will be first underscore name and in some other other ones it's going to be first dash name so in case uh, you need to be able to manage that then you can do that here if you just search for the parameters you're going to see the name if they call it full name for example full underscore name then you can click the change and it's going to change it for this webhook only. So you can now manage these parameters as well, depending on the actual platform where you're sending the information to. Once you're ready with this one, click save and then you can go test it out. Uh, you'll need to do a new order or update the order in order to send the information to the webhook endpoint. So that's what's new with GrooveCart. Let me just go over the list and show you some other improvements that we did. We have improved the proceed to checkout button. It doesn't show anymore on 
it doesn't show the float cart uh, checkout button in case the cart is empty. So you remember when you were adding some things into the cart and when the cart was empty, it doesn't actually show the checkout option. And that's the, that's the improvement. People were confused why there's a checkout when the checkout cart is empty. So that, that's not happening anymore. You can just test it out by clicking on your checkout over here and it's not going to show the checkout option uh, without any products in there. Moving on to the next things, uh, st uh, staff account changes. We did some staff account changes where in case you are logged in under a staff account, you won't be able to see any kind of options here in this more links section. The, the staff accounts are now restricted usually in more links section we have a lot of things that are related for managing the actual account and also the store and in certain cases staff accounts don't need to have um, have options for these like clear cache and storefront and regenerate images and things like that so now we have reduced this to only the links that the staff accounts need next thing is we improved the zapier or zapier we now send ISO and ISO3 country codes through ZAPS. Um, ISO is kind of the older version. ISO3 is the newer version of this uh, information. And we send these through ZAPS now with a Zapier integration. Bundles. We, we changed the way the bundles work a little bit. Um, the percentages were shown uh, differently. And the claim button acts as a add to cart button now when you're selling bundles. We also did some changes and improvements in the country list page. Now we can define that uh, we can define the country requires a state or doesn't require a state. And also we did some style modifications for a zone selector. Let me just quickly show you what those changes were. So in case you go to settings, international, and here we go into into the zone. we have done a little bit easier management of, of the selection. And also you can now use these search options. And you also have the bulk settings for selecting all, unselecting, disabling, and uh, things like that in a zone. If we go on to the next one, bulk category management, it is now simpler and more powerful than before. So category of your products, this is where we mean category management. You can also go into your products um, and categories and then basically manage the categories from here. Let me just show you here in my products option. So when you want to put in uh, multiple products into a specific category, previously it was kind of confusing to do. Now we did some UI and UI changes that will allow you to to uh, to do bulk changes. For example, you want to move these and manage categories uh, to a different one. You can also add associative categories and remove associative categories through these options right now. So that's much more simpler and powerful than it was before. And we also disable the switching of the review app on and off. So this is over here. Um, it is now always on, but it will not show when you add when you don't add the element on the page. So the review app was something that uh, that was uh, that needed to be enabled from the apps section. Now it is always on inside the builder. When you go into the builder and you and you go into a product page, you can you can drag in a review app element. Let's just go into this one. And here we have product elements and we have different options for it. And then in the review section, let me just see, product reviews, you can enable or disable that uh, through adding the element or, or not adding it on the page. Let's move on. We did some fixes. I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. I'm just going to read them out. Bugs when store switch on maintenance mode by itself. We had certain cases where uh, the store switched on maintenance when you had uh, your contact form connected. Runtar integration images fix. Some users reported some uh, issues with a runtar integration that is, now, that is now done. Problem with removing associated category from product edit page in certain accounts. PayPal error 
stores in Groove Cart dashboard. Manage store page issue where the stores don't show up and the page gets stuck. This was a big one. This is the manage store page where where you're actually inside the Groove um, Groove dashboard. Let me just try and go to the Groove dashboard. And you went to Groove Cart, and over here these stores were not showing up. And when you actually wanted to enter it, they the the page got stuck. Um, my address page on buyer's account uh, showing two phone fields. Some fields were not saving. You also remove the company and the address line. Two fields. The the buyer's account is when you go over and log in to a store. In there, we were showing some of the fields as duplicates. Some uh, some fields we removed because they were not needed, and that has been now uh, managed a little bit better. We also had issues where you couldn't disable the Groove Paid module. Now that's possible. We also had some webmail fixes with unresponsive buttons. When you when you logged into your webmail uh, from the help desk button inside the Groove Card dashboard, um, some users reported that that in certain cases the buttons were unresponsive. They couldn't create new emails or reply to emails and things like that. We also have a strict uh, tag validation. We are warning and also doing a success message when the tags are incorrectly set up. So in case you have some tags and you want to manage those tags, in certain cases they were not, um, we weren't giving the feedback for, for, for those tags and now we are actually doing that when you're doing any kind of product setup. Let me just go into the products and show you very quickly over here managing this one in certain cases users were uh, adding tags with numbers and hashtags and all sorts of different things now we are doing tag validation we also wrote here no special characters only a to z and zero to nine so if you want to do a red then you can do that but if you want red uh, and then s some some hashtag or or something like that it's not allowing me to actually put in just numbers um, Shopify uh, migration bad imports there were some issues with bad UI in certain cases when import was happening that was fixed and we also had some issues with product prices more than $1,000 we disabled the separation of prices with commas and dots so it's easier to manage in certain cases $1,000.0 dot zero zero was written in certain cases one thousand dot zero zero comma zero zero was written and um groove card just didn't know what to do with those dots and dashes now we removed those and now we just have uh product prices managed like this without the actual extra uh zero zeros and dashes and dots like that so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. These are the, the things that we did for GrooveCart. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. But this is just the start of the further developments. We have been waiting for this API for quite a long time. Now we have it and you'll be able to see uh, more and more connections of different apps, third-party apps to GrooveCart. And also you'll have the power to actually send out your information and connect yourself uh, the groove card store to other parties like uh, like Google Sheets and things like that without the need of Zapier and, and tools like that. So there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Thank you.